Today, I want to take a look at using modern certificate authentication for PMP PowerShell, but hosted in a runbook. So as a recap, we have three videos. The first was using client ID and client secret, text only. The second was using a certificate from the local computer that there's a PFX file we registered. It's in the same path as our PS1, and they're running from a local computer together. Now we want to take a look at extending that model into the cloud with runbooks, essentially hosting our PowerShell PS1 at Microsoft's data center. So here we have an Azure automation account, which you can easily create by going into any Azure subscription, clicking create and typing in auto. And it has nothing in it at the moment, so we're going to go ahead and create a runbook, and we're going to name that PMP PowerShell. The runbook type will be PowerShell, and the version will be 5.1. Now I'm doing this for more backward compatibility with a lot of the um, older commandlets to ensure that things run successfully. The 7.1 preview might also work, but just so you know, this is based on kind of the newer .NET frameworks that are cross-platform and slightly different technology under the hood, but we're going to go ahead and do 5.1 as our stable known version. And we'll click create to make an empty runbook. Well, with the runbook created, I'm going to take the exact same code I was running on-prem, paste it in, and do a save, a publish, and a test. We are expecting it not to run, but we want to kind of see what that looks like. So here we are running the test. And as expected, we get an error message coming back. And this is talking about a particular file not being found because it does not exist. And this is the client text. Essentially, the, the client number as to what app we had registered. So what we're going to do is make a few updates to get this ready for running in a runbook. And one of them will be, instead of leaning on the text file for client ID, we're going to go ahead and put it directly in here to streamline any dependencies. So there's our connection. We'll go ahead and hit save. The next thing we want to do is come up to the automation account, not the runbook, but take a look at any of the certificates in the automation account. Now the automation account is sort of the, the shell or the parent. I mean, this is, this is the parent umbrella or container where everything is running from. So you might have multiple runbooks, multiple certificates, various modules that you want installed. You can even do saved credentials, kind of like Windows Credential Manager and Control Panel. But all of this is the background that lets your runbook have the dependencies it needs. So if we come into certificates, we're going to upload the PFX from local. You get a task pane on the right. We need to give it a description. We'll go with exactly the same thing we're using on-prem and provide the file. Okay, here we found the PMP PowerShell PFX file. So we'll go ahead and mark it as exportable and we will provide the password because that's something that was used when the PFX was created. Now here we get an error about the term connect PMP online is not recognized. And for that one, we want to come over and take a closer look at some of the options we have with the modules. So the automation account that's hosting this is uh, just one level up from the runbook itself. And that's where we need to be to load the modules. And when we come into modules, it shows all of the things that are available by default. We're going to do add. We're going to browse the gallery, enter the module name, Click here to browse from gallery. We'll type in PMP. It is one of the favorites, pmp.powershell. We'll do select runtime version import. So it's working on that command. And we'll see it is marked available here. And now our PowerShell module is showing us fully installed and available. We can even click on it to open it up. And it'll show our version number, size, and that there are 350 commands with the descriptions for each. So having that in place, we can come back over to our runbook, open it up in edit mode, and click the test pane to run again. 
Now the reason I'm showing the error messages is intentional. We could edit those out, skip them, and only do the final perfect run. But I think it's a good demo to learn more. You can kind of see the error messages that you know, when you start a new runbook, you're going to need to add the modules. You're going to need to add the certificate. There are dependencies. Here we have certificate not found. There's currently no connection yet. Use connect PMP online. But working through these error messages is exactly what we want in order to get better and to learn all the dependencies. So to recap, with Azure Runbooks, we can connect using a certificate in the highlighted code from lines 11 to 17. We want to declare the tenant on line 9, and we want to connect on line 21. Line 21 is going to make use of certificate path and password. This is the certificate PFX file that we have in a local temp folder. And it also needs the password, which in our case is password from line 12. The important part is the middle block of code for the Azure certificate where we're downloading it. Here we have our password input and we're using the command get automation certificate. That is an Azure Runbook specific command that reads the PFX content as a byte array. That's the file we uploaded earlier into the Azure automation. So after reading the file, we want to go ahead and save it. So we're reading the content as a byte array, but we need to write the file and save it as well. On line number 16, we're giving the file a name, pmp-powershell.pfx, and that will write it to a local temp folder. Keeping in mind, Azure Runbook wakes up with an empty temp folder. Every time it runs, it starts with an empty folder. So we're taking the PFX content, we're downloading the byte array, and saving it to a local file. That local file is then given to the connect command. We're giving it the PFX file name, and we're also giving it the private key password. And giving it both of those will allow it to make a successful connection with the certificate path and the certificate password. So we'll go ahead and run things, go into our edit mode, our test pane, and we'll start the Azure Runbook and run the PowerShell from the top. Here we can see it completed, and the output has a list of all sites on the tenant. So we know that the Runbook ran successfully, was able to make a connection, was able to read data, and it could only do that if it made a successful connection with the PFX certificate. And this is the output of Git PMP tenant site formatted as a table. So that shows how we can make a connection using a certificate that's stored up here in the automation account. And again, that's the file that we upload and we do want to mark it as exportable equals yes. That's an important feature because when the runbook activates, it's actually exporting the certificate and that exported byte array gets saved as a PFX file. And here again on the code, the block in the middle is what's downloading the file and writing it to a local temp folder. And saving that file locally is something that needs to happen every time the runbook executes. So the connect command can gain access to the PFX file itself and the private key password. And that shows us how to make a connection using Azure Runbooks with a certificate. Thanks for watching.